In order to begin to understand how our financial system works, we need to go back to the early 1900s, 1910 to be exact. Everyone at some point in their lives has heard of the Federal Reserve, but most likely don't understand what it is or how it works. The Federal Reserve, referred to as the Fed, is a central bank that many economists refer to as the biggest robbery ever enacted on the American people. The reason for this is because the Federal Reserve is neither part of the federal government nor does it have any reserves. Yet, this single organization controls the money supply of the most powerful country in the world. The Fed is very diligent in hiding the fact that they are not part of the government. The last thing they want the American people to fully understand is that our government does not control our own money. In order to achieve this, they were very clever and decided to call their institution the Federal Reserve. And by labeling themselves this way, the general public never thought twice about who was in control of the country's money supply. If the Federal Reserve is not part of the government, then who controls this private organization and how did this come to be? The answer to this question is what changed the course of our country forever. In November of 1910, a secret meeting took place of six bankers and economic policymakers who represented the financial elite of the Western world. It was hosted at the J.P. Morgan Estate on Jekyll Island in Georgia. In attendance was Senator Nelson W. Aldrich, Abram Pyatt Andrew Jr., Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, Frank Vanderlip, President of National City Bank of New York, Henry P. Davidson, Senior Partner of J.P. Morgan & Company, Charles D. Norton, President of First National Bank of New York, Paul Warburg, Director of Wells Fargo, Benjamin Strong, the emissary for J.P. Morgan, and coincidentally, the first president of the Federal Reserve. Years later, Frank Vanderlip referred to this meeting as the actual conception of what eventually became the Federal Reserve System. This meeting was so secret at the time that not even the names of those who attended were mentioned to the servants who lived and worked on the island. The men who attended came on a late night train, claiming to be on their way to a hunting expedition but instead, these bankers met with Senator Nelson Aldrich to draft what would eventually become the Federal Reserve Act. This private meeting attended by some of the most powerful men in America was strategically designed to take control of our country's money supply and to achieve ultimate power in America. Meyer Amshed Rothschild, one of the most powerful European bankers of his time, stated it best when he said, Permit me to issue and control the money of the nation and I care not who makes its laws. On December 23, 1913, two days before Christmas, when most people in Congress were home with their families, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson. That single act, however small it may seem, transferred the control of our monetary system from our government into the hands of some of the wealthiest men in our country. Putting into law the Federal Reserve Act gave unlimited power to a few wealthy banking institutions in America. The Fed has the power to issue currency, manipulate interest rates, and run secret bailouts. Yet Congress and the President are not allowed full oversight over this powerful organization. The Federal Reserve enjoys a monopoly over the creation of our nation's money and credit, but for 100 years, they have never been completely transparent and accountable about it. And we don't have to look back too far from today to see what it looks like in real life. When testifying before Congress in 2009, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke refused to disclose which institutions receive trillions of dollars in these bailouts and loans or give our representatives details about what deals were being made. So my question to you is, will you tell the American people to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars. Will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Will you tell us who they are? No. In an interview with Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner, he makes the stunning assertion that conducting a full audit of the Federal Reserve, something never before done in its 100-year history, is a line that we don't want to cross. 
to be denied full transparency of these transactions after U.S. taxpayers contributed over $16 trillion to these bailouts and loans is unthinkable and unconstitutional. It is our right as American citizens to know where our money is being spent. It's very ironic that if you don't give the IRS full transparency with your finances, you go to jail. But if you're a private organization of elite bankers that controls the money supply of a country, you're free to do as you please without full oversight. This private organization is arrogant in the fact that the same accounting laws that apply to the rest of America do not apply to them. There is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. Their control appears to be unlimited, and 2008 is the most recent example of how much power the Fed actually has in our country. Many of us were told in private conversations that if we voted against this bill on Monday, that the sky would fall, the market would drop two or three thousand points the first day, another couple thousand the second day, and a few members were even told that there would be martial law in America if we voted no. That's what I call fear-mongering. The elite banking institutions took trillions of dollars worth of risk, and when they lost their bets, they threatened politicians to use taxpayer money to bail them out, or else we would face an Armageddon type of scenario. This historic change of power in America is again why many economists refer to it as the biggest robbery ever enacted on the American people.